if you've watched many, many, too many perspective theory videos and think you understand them when you've watched them, but then when you go to draw, you actually still can't work out how they apply to what you're drawing, to what you should be drawing. And you end up being even more confused than ever, rather than finding the whole issue of perspective clearer for all the videos that you've watched. And in the end, this happens so many times, we can be left thinking there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm just not bright enough to understand perspective. Maybe it's really, really complicated. So complicated that I can't even see that I'm not capable of understanding it. If this is you, then you must watch this video so that you can understand the problem is not your ability to understand the issue of perspective because you're right in the first place. It's actually not that difficult. But what you haven't understood is that almost certainly the problem is not you, it's with the videos that are made on perspective. And I get repeated comments from people that they've watched all these videos, they think they understand it, but they struggle to see how it applies to what they actually draw. I've put a great deal into trying to work out why is this the case? And I'm sure I've worked it out. After a few months of starting to make drawing videos for YouTube, it became clear to me that the most popular topic was perspective. The topic that you could be guaranteed would get the most attention was almost anything that had the word perspective in the title. And because it was such a topic of interest, it wasn't surprising to discover that there were many, many, many videos which had been made on it. Because most YouTube presenters do a little bit of research to find out what topics in a given area is most likely to attract views. But it was a surprise to discover that these videos left so many people feeling more confused about perspective in their drawing, even though they felt they had understood the videos. There's something not working here. Let me outline what I believe it is. The first thing we need to understand is that most perspective theory videos have not been designed for artists. They've been designed for architects. They hark back to my technical drawing subject days in high school, where we learnt how to do presentation drawings to showcase a particular building with the perspectives angled to give a very dramatic view of all of one building and even at the risk of distorting the shape slightly to fit it all into the one viewing position. And the information I see presented and the way it's presented in most perspective videos today is identical to what was taught to me in my technical drawing class in the 1970s, which very much had a drafting or architectural focus. So there's the first problem. If you're an artist, this presentation many, many decades ago was not devised with you and your needs in mind. The second point is that because perspective videos are very popular, they are a very popular subject for YouTube creators. If I'm creating videos for YouTube, I want to get lots of views. So therefore, researching and making videos on popular subjects is a very helpful thing to do for my channel. But to make perspective videos, I don't have to be either an architect or an artist. I can look at a few videos that other people have made and because the information in them is actually not very difficult to learn, it's pretty straightforward for me to make another video about perspective. When the truth in fact is that all I know about perspective is what I've learned watching three videos in preparation for this video I've made, where I've repackaged that information slightly. So the third point is because these videos are not made by artists or for artists, it's not surprising that they don't actually explain how this information is applicable to artists and to the artistic process. And the next point is, because these videos are often made by people who, who never actually have to apply them to the drawing process, they're really unaware of the shortcomings of the material as it's presented to the drawing process. And the information, in fact, only applies to a very limited situation, to a very, if you like, artificially constructed situation of a box sitting on ground that's level, dead flat, from the person standing viewing the box to as far as you can see in every direction. 
this may work for an architectural presentation of one building that is on level ground but there are not many real life streetscapes that really are like this and so these videos never tell you their limitations if you're an artist and the truth is the video creators almost certainly aren't aware of the limitations themselves such as as this is only the whole story if we're talking of a box on ground that's level as far as the eye can see and that our boxes are all at right angles to each other or parallel to each other and we will find it very difficult to find any streetscape that really follows all of these requirements for this perspective presentation to be everything we need to interpret understand and draw the scene another thing i personally have found very unhelpful about these perspective video presentations is the overemphasis on vanishing points now vanishing points the way they're presented is helpful if i want to draw one building in a correct perspective and i want to make sure that the whole building is captured both in a visually dramatic way and also in a way that shows all the detail that i want and it can even be distorted in a way that might even be difficult to observe in real life but which showcases the building and its features but in my experience as a drawing artist vanishing points are usually of very little practical concern when I'm drawing because in most cases one or both of them are off the page they're usually off the page a long way to the right or the left I've had vanishing points that I've worked out are over a meter off my paper again we have the problem that what's presented in these videos simply doesn't apply to the real life situations that as an artist we're drawing another problem is i can't believe the term horizon is still used for that line that goes across our scene that has the vanishing points on it because the horizon is already something the horizon is the line where the land meets the sky and i've drawn lots of scenes that have a horizon that we can see where the land meets the sky but it's not where the horizon is from a perspective viewpoint which is an incredibly confusing thing and i have never ever heard it pointed out in one of these videos that there is a difference that the horizon in inverted commas in this video is not necessarily in fact probably not the horizon you might see in your scene if you're actually seeing a horizon in your scene how confusing is that but it's not relevant if you're an architect preparing an architectural presentation which is why i believe the origin of these videos and these presentations is in teaching architecture and drafting to people perhaps this next point is related slightly but one of the problems with perspective video presentations that i've seen is that the eye level to use the term i prefer for what's also referred to as horizon simply because it's less confusing is that the eye level itself is always neglected it just magically appears as a straight line at the very start of the presentation and then it's all about vanishing points and angles when in fact as far as i can see eye level is the most important thing about perspective for an artist perspective is simply the way something looks from a given spot and eye level is the level of our eyes or of the camera when we're viewing that so it's not at all surprising that eye level is going to be vital when we're considering how different things in our scene look from that position where i'm viewing it as i understand it finding where the eye level is when we start a drawing is one of the key things to a successful drawing and i have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of these drawings and yet i have never heard a single video talk about how to find eye level and i know from comments and questions it's a source of great confusion and yet if we watch these videos we're left thinking that somehow i should be able to understand it somehow it should be clear from this presentation how to find eye level and if i can't work it out then there must be something wrong with me when the problem is a video that isn't going to teach me what i'm seeking to learn from it and this next point is i have never i have never seen in an understanding perspective video how the theoretical diagram is to be applied to a real life situation i have never seen a photo of a 
complex scene of buildings in a landscape and had the video show how what they've just shown with this little box and vanishing points actually relates to real life. Like in real life where streets go uphill and downhill and around corners, where streets aren't parallel, where there are houses and buildings that don't even align with streets but just angle each other in a very higgledy-piggledy way. And yet we're left thinking when we've seen these videos that we should somehow be able to go from that to drawing these sorts of real life scenes. And when we find it confusing, we think there must be something wrong with me that I just can't understand it. Another point that I find very surprising that I have never ever heard addressed in these perspective teaching videos is an exploration of the very different place two different types of artists find themselves. The first type of artist is an artist such as myself where I draw either on location or from photo references. The second type of artist that perspective videos should be useful for is an artist who creates scenes from their imagination that involve landscapes and buildings such as when we might create backgrounds for video games. Because for the first group of artists, for the first category of artists, those who draw from life or from photos, an understanding of perspective as laid out in the perspective videos is actually not even necessary. It's not actually vital. Because if I learn to observe carefully what's in front of me or what's in my reference and draw it accurately, then I don't need to understand why is it looking like that. I just need to be able to see that it's looking like that and to copy it accurately. Now I think there are advantages in understanding it, but strictly speaking these videos actually aren't necessary for me to do a superb drawing of a scene in front of me or in a photo. For the second group, because we are creating our viewpoints and then we have to position objects within those viewpoints and angle them and draw them so that they look right. And I can only assume that the reason why these videos don't address these issues is because they're not made by artists and so they're not aware of what the questions artists are asking and what the needs artists have are. Therefore the fact that these videos haven't addressed the questions artists have it means we really shouldn't think it's our fault when we don't get the answers to the questions we have from the videos that we've watched. And my final thing that I've never heard said in any teaching video on perspective is what advantage understanding perspective does have for the drawing artist such as myself who draws from life or from photo references. Because I believe there certainly is an advantage and that's this, that if I understand how the perspective theory works with an emphasis on the word theory, then when I see a scene in real life in front of me or in a photo that I want to draw, if I understand the theory, it helps me see what's happening in real life. As long as I understand the conditions that theory operates within and can see if those conditions are met in my scene or if the conditions have changed and so I need to change the theory a bit. But if I understand the theory and I can apply it to my scene in some way, then it lets me see what's happening in my scene more exactly, if you like, more precisely. And what I see more precisely, more accurately, I believe, or in my experience anyway, I find it easier to draw it more accurately. I find it easier to see the angles as they really are because I know what sort of angles I'm going to be looking for. I find it easier to work out which lines go to the same vanishing point and which lines don't go to that vanishing point because I understand what's operating in this particular scene with this particular landform and these buildings and their alignment. So it's easier for me to see how these lines are affected by these perspective principles and therefore to draw them accurately in my drawing. But I think perspective videos that are pitched at artists have a lot to answer for when they are so very limited in what they've said, when they're really not designed to answer the questions that artists are asking. And they end up causing not just confusion, but worse, a feeling that I'm not able to understand this subject, this issue. Maybe I can't draw architecture or buildings or streetscapes at all, because maybe I'm just not clever enough to, when none of that is true. If this rings a bell with you, if you're thinking, yes, I knew there had to be a reason why none of this made sense to me, then I have individual videos on things such as 
How do we find eye level in any scene? How is perspective affected when the street goes uphill or it goes downhill? What happens with vanishing points when the streets curve around the corners? What happens when streets curve and go up or down at the same time? I have a video on scenes with more complex structures and buildings that look at how what we learn in the perspective videos applies in this particular example. I have a very large perspective playlist with about 150 perspective videos on it, but I also have one that has just 10 videos on it, which I believe is a really good summary to step through if you like the antidote to the perspective videos that we might have been watching. I've had so many comments on these videos now where people have said, thank you for the first time in my life, I understand how to find eye level. For the first time, perspective makes sense when I go to draw. Thank you. I feel like I can actually keep drawing. I was going to give up because I didn't feel I could understand it enough to do it properly. So let me encourage us all. Let's not rush to think the problem is in here rather than think the problem could actually be with the perspective video presentations that were never designed for an artist such as myself, were never designed to apply to drawing a scene, and as far as I can see, almost never explain what their shortcomings will be if you want to use them beyond a very tight architectural presentation and drafting scenario. So if you have been confused, can I really encourage you to watch this 10 video playlist of mine? I'm going to attach the link to it to this video. So if you want to go to it now and at least bookmark it for later, you can. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, if these issues have rung bells for you, resonated within you, made you think, oh, is there hope for me yet with perspective? The answer is yes. So if you've had some confusion, if you've had doubt about your own ability in relation to this, can I really recommend watching this playlist and see if it doesn't cause everything to fall into place, if it doesn't give you that, aha, aha, I can understand it. And better still, give confidence to start to draw the subjects that we really want to draw. I hope this has encouraged you to give perspective a go if you have or you're on the point of giving up. But look, whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.